My record professionally was um, two losses, five wins. But my best win was after after a loss. Because I think to, to, come, to win after a loss is more difficult than to win after a win. Because your ego is already boosted when you've been winning consistently. Yeah. Right? And sometimes losing makes you want to give up. If you're used, if you're used to winning, because I had never lost before, so all I knew was to win. Hey, hang on. Welcome to the gym. Come on in. well-rounded experiences so you, yes you need the qualifications but you need to be in a place where you feel comfortable but challenged but you're learning yeah. around people who are who are better than you if you need to travel and I don't just necessarily mean abroad but wherever it's in the UK experience different training styles gyms most importantly you'll be a good human being because you can't how can you be a good person trainer if you're not a good human being first you've got to be a good human being first and then from there you can be a good um, person trainer sometimes your people worry about just getting a qualification that's the easiest part you remove yourself from the internet and go and meet people would you advise that someone starts up within a gym and gains that experience or should they start with their own private clients or a combination of the two you should build relationships relationships is key you can look on google and find personal training qualifications which is good to get but it doesn't make you a pt just because you played in the premiership for one game, does it make you a premiership footballer? You, you, you have to have experience under your belt. I recommend to um, contact gyms like Commando Temple, contact you know um, businesses like the one I I run, Sayal, and me and my sister, my brother and sister business, who understand the path what it takes to become a coach. Because to be a good coach or a personal trainer, you do have to have good personal interaction. Having fun on the journey is important. I feel like when you find boutique gyms, smaller business, you have a lot of fun as well on the journey. I've got to see things like strongman training, strongwoman training. We've got to see kettlebell training, powerlifting, Olympic lifting, Muay Thai, BJJ, Judo, Jiu Jitsu, um, calisthenics, parkour. So when, you, when you're in a gym environment like that and you can learn from all those disciplines, you become more well-rounded. If you've got different uh, disciplines and experiences under your belt, because every individual is different, you can then adapt to that, that individual. Where if you just do the PT qualification, and then you just work in a, a, a commercial gym, you're very like, very limited, very limited, yeah. So for the viewers that might not know, what is Muay Thai? So Muay Thai is a, it's a martial arts, cool. uh, traditional martial arts from Thailand. Yeah. And it's known as the sign of eight limbs. So punches, fists, elbows, knees, and, and kicks and it's yeah it's very old martial arts I think I believe it's over 400 years old and the Thais used to well still do but originally train their bodies as weapons to protect themselves from outside inv invaders when their villages were attacked so yeah it's, it's a beautiful sport and a lot of um, children start from the age of like five and six um, and they join the gym and they use it as a way of um, earning money to um, help their family yeah. and help themselves so, they so, to do it. so yeah yeah they do they do yeah a it's a culture it's, a, it's not just for the fun of it exactly. fun of game so it's not just a hobby for no them. over here death, yeah. yeah over here we we just fight because it's we enjoy, enjoy it's luxury yeah more of a luxury so this challenge is a speed challenge, but it involves some technique. So Hannah is going to do one right kick, one switch kick, one 
touch the wall and back. So you've got to do that five times. And let's see how quickly she can get that done. Spring and back. Hannah, are you ready? I'm ready. Boom, all right, let's do it. All right, we've got a timer. Go. Good. Nine times. And back in. Good, remember you only get one switch. Back in, let's do, let's do, let's do, let's do that. Bench up, bench up, good work, good work, good work. Run forward. Brilliant work, man, real work, man. Last one, last one. Last one. Alright. And sprint, and sprint. And then touch the bank at the end, touch the bank, the lane to the bank. I fell in love with football, like you from a young age. Didn't fulfill my dream of becoming a professional footballer. And I, um, so I spent time in America on a soccer scholarship. That failed, but the experience was great. So I, and I came back, I was a little bit depressed. Um, so one day, as you do, a young person, sitting on your bed, watching a movie, and Kickboxer comes on. I don't know if you've seen it. It was a movie, uh, John Claude Van Damme. And I said, uh, this is the movie, this is the martial arts I want to do. Came across a gym called KO South in Thornton Heath. And yeah, the rest was history. So then from my time, how did you then make the transition into personal training alongside it? It was more accidental. More accidental. I didn't have an ambition to be a personal trainer. Sport has always been part of my life. So my dad was a professional table tennis player. So being involved in sport and coaching was just part of my life. For me, I see coaching and personal training as using my skills to empower, positively impact someone else. So to teach a man or woman self-defense felt liberating, you know, teach them how to punch, how to block, but teaching kids from people with feral units um, how to have a bit of discipline, respect, self-control, because they have lots of energy. I began coaching kids in the community, uh, you know, locally in Croydon, and working with kids in people with feral units and kids who had been in and out of prison. I met a gentleman called Rob, Rob Blair, he's the founder of this gym actually. He did a strength and conditioning session at the Muay Thai gym in Heath. I stayed in contact with him. So relationships, relationships got me to where I am in the position I'm at now. He took me under his wing in training me up to become a, um, a personal trainer. If you're a personal trainer that's just starting out, what salary expectations can they be anticipating? I, I want to talk from experience because it's not like, like a, a, a right way or a wrong way. So for myself, I based my price on my experience. So when I first started out, I was charging about forty pounds um, an, hour, an hour for an hour session. But now, having you know a number of years' experience under my belt, my minimum price for an adult is for um, is seventy pounds for for an hour session. If I'm charging a child, that's fifty pounds, and I based it on what I believe I'm worth. So how have you been able to navigate your business throughout COVID? We created an online virtual membership where you can learn how to um, martial arts Muay Thai, you can learn um, dance, and you can take my kettlebell training, hip training, yoga, strength and conditioning, all online with coaches like myself and my sister. And if you miss a class, you get it on demand. So it's like a, it's a Netflix fitness subscription, but with live stream classes. One of the reasons why we created this virtual membership is to fill the gap, to stop people from stopping training. So if the gyms are, are closed, you can train online with us. So what's your favorite thing you would say about being a personal trainer? Seeing people smile and achieve their results. And I don't just mean physical results, because it's not just about um, looking slim or, or being the most amazing athlete, you know, because that's not what everyone wants to be. So as I said before, you know, mental and physical well-being is really important for me. So if somebody has stopped smoking because of training or they're eating a bit healthier or they're feeling happier in themselves they're feeling more confident their relationships are better their job they're happier in their job because 
you know, to be successful in life, you have to be happy at home first. I, I, I enjoy my personal life, which allows me to then give the best for people that I'm training and hopefully they achieve their results and that they can then go on and, and continue that for the rest of their life. Really. Just finished up an amazing session with Jonathan. Great, highly recommend. I hope you enjoyed today's career interview and found it insightful. Please let us know in the comments below if there's anything else you would like to see career related and let us know how you get along with the challenge as well. I'm done. Already? Hey, we've got more! I need a drink! Oh.